Lesson 7. The use of iteration. Quite often in program you need to repeat an instructional process over and over again. This is called iteration and involves the use of programming constructs called loops. In this example the person repeatedly wakes up in the night and if it is dark outside they go back to sleep. They continue doing this until it is light outside and at this point they get up. Let's start by looking at for loops. For loops are examples of definite iteration, as when the program starts, you know exactly the number of times that you are going to loop. For loops often use the range built in function, as you can see here. Just remember, the end of the range means up to, but not including the final number. And iteration also uses the colons, and the loops are indented in the same way that if selection is indented. In this particular example, we have the first value for n is 0 and then the program loops and the second value is 1 and the final value is 5 1 less than the total at the end there which is 6 let's just see this in action run module and it produces uh, the values of n from 0 to 5 we can change the range for example we can change the 6 to 11 and let's look at the, the program again. And this time it goes from 0 to 10. We can change the lower number to say 5 and run it again. And this time it will go from 5 and go up to 10. Uh, so that's a very simple way of changing the range and seeing what happens. We can also use a for loop to loop through text. In this case, we have a print statement, hello world. If we run this particular program here, it will loop through hello world 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. You can also get the program to loop through the numbers in steps of 2. So here we've got 0 to 11 here, so it will go from 0 up to 10, and it will go in steps of 2 here. So we run this particular program 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We can also iterate the string by using a for loop that repeats until the end of the string has been reached. So in the example here, we have a variable called word with the word London. And each time it reaches a letter, it's then uh, outputting that particular letter. So let's run the program. It will output each letter on a different line. In the previous lesson, we looked at nested ifs. Here we can see for loops can also be nested so we have one for loop here and a second for loop uh, that's nested inside the first for loop what this program does is it prints the times tables so the first uh, for loop is to determine which tables will be printed this is the for example two times table the second for loop what it does it takes the first number there of two and it will actually multiply it by whichever times table it is so in this case it will multiply n by i which is in the first case would be 2 so it would be 2 times 2 and it then equals the i times the n which is obviously in this case 4 let's just run this program to see what happens and as you can see here we have the 2 times table and we have the 3 times table as well we can also change the range for example here we can change this to start at the 10 times table and go up to the 12 times table by putting 13 there if we run the program now you can see you get the uh, 10 times table the 11 times table and the 12 times table let's just see what happens if we move the for loop so it's not nested so we move it back to here and run the program again This time what you get is it runs the first for loop and when it's completed the first for loop it then runs the second for loop. So you can see clearly the importance of having one for loop inside the other for loop. Now let's take a look at while loops which are sometimes called conditional loops. Let's look at a simple while loop. In this example x starts off as 5 and then while x is greater or equal to 1 we will be uh, outputting x. So the first instance of x will be 5. Then we say x equals x minus 1, so we're then saying 5 minus 1 equals 4. So the next time it loops, it will give you a 4, then a 3, then a 2, and then finally it will give you a 1, which equals uh, x. Therefore, while x is greater or equal to 1, stops, and therefore 
the, the loop stops. Let's just run the program to see what happens. And you can see 54321 and the loop stops. Here is another example of a while loop. In this particular case, we're looking for a password. And while the password does not equal 1234, which is the correct password, it will keep asking what the password is. So it will ask you to enter the password. If the password is correct, 1234, then it will actually uh, output password correct, you may continue. Else, if the password is incorrect, it will keep asking you to enter the password again and again until you get it correct. Let's just run the program to see what happens. So let's enter the password. In this case, I've got the password correct, therefore it's allowing me to continue. Let's just do this again. This time, if I enter the incorrect password, it will ask me to enter the password again. If I enter it incorrectly again, it will say incorrect again. But then finally, if I, if I type in the correct password, it will say password correct. You can also use a while loop to create a menu system. So we can see here we have a menu system and at the top it says while carry on equals true. So at the beginning of the program, carry on is a variable and it, does, it is a true variable. Therefore, the, the program will continue. And we have uh, one, two, three choices in this particular menu, instructions, quiz and quit. So basically, according to the choice you make, which is actually inside the while loop, it will actually perform particular tasks. So if you say if choice equals one, then it will show you the instructions. If choice equals two, it will actually ask you a quiz question. And if choice equals three, it will uh, quit the game and say thank you for playing the game. Finally, if you enter an incorrect number, i.e. not one, two or three, then it won't be accepted and it will ask you to choose a game. Let's run this program to see what happens. So we choose run module and it asks us which option we'd like to choose. So let's choose option number one. And it says uh, instructions, read the question and enter your answer. So we're ready to actually take part in the quiz now. So we go to number two and it says to us, what is the capital of France? The first question and we enter Paris as the capital of France. Press enter, it tells us we're correct. And finally, it thanks us for playing the quiz and we exit the program. One thing you need to do when you're using Python is watch out for infinite loops. These loops will not stop. So please be careful when you're writing code that you don't end up with an infinite loop. Let's look at this program. X equals five. And while X is greater or equal to one, we're going to actually display X. But we're going to say afterwards X equals X minus one, which is actually inside the while loop. So each time the value of X will decrease by one. So let's just run this particular program. And we get five, four, three, two, one, as you would expect. Now, if we just change the program and we say this time plus one, in this particular case, X will always be greater than one. So when we run the program, we have an infinite loop, which will not stop. So let's just run the program and it'll carry on and on and on. And fortunately we can actually exit the program uh, and stop the program, but uh, it can, can cause problems if you're running the program for real, if you have one of these infinite loops. Finally, you can use break to leave a loop. Here we have a for loop going from zero to 10. And if I is greater or equal to four, the loop will stop. So when we run the program, it won't run from zero to 10. It will run from zero, one, two, and three. Because it's reached four here, the program will break and it will stop the program.